This is Ed Polikoff, and today we're going to talk a little bit about cleaning your computer and going through some steps that will help it run smoother. Firstly, we're going to go through some steps to do this. We need a flashlight, a vacuum cleaner, a can of air or a compressor. I prefer a compressor because it doesn't run out and it doesn't get cold. Screwdriver and nut driver to open your case screws. Good solid work surface. You don't want your computer falling on the ground. And a soft cloth or a towel to put underneath of the computer. Always wear safety glasses and a dust mask when around dust. Ground yourself. Static electricity can ruin your computer. Unplug the power cable before you start. Power will remain on the motherboard if your power cable is not out of the computer. So always unplug it. This particular computer is made by a company named Antec. The computer has two filters on the front of it. To access the filters, you want to push the doors gently on the right side and they'll pop open. You'll see the two screen filters. Grab the top tabs, pull them out gently, and you'll have the two filters to vacuum off. At the same time while you're doing that, you'll see the metal grate behind the filter. You can go ahead and vacuum that out as well if there's additional dust there. Always make sure you vacuum your filters from the front. You don't want to pull dirt and dust back through the filter and get it clogged in the screen. To replace the filter, fit it back in the metal slots, push down on the tabs, and snap it in place. Go ahead and vacuum the inside of those pop-out doors to make sure the dust gets sucked back through, doesn't just re-enter the filter. Now we want to take our brush tool and our vacuum cleaner, vacuum off the front of the case around the power switches, the ports on the front, drive bays, make sure all that dirt and dust is out of there as well. Now it's time to take a look inside the computer. To get the cover off of this particular computer, there's a screw on the top and the bottom of the panel. If you're looking from the back of the computer, it's on the right-hand side. So we're going to remove those two screws and slide the panel out of the way. For those of you who don't poke around in computers very often, here's a quick look at the components inside the computer, the major components. They're all labeled for you. First thing we're going to do here is remove the screw on the hard drive bay and slide it out. You'll see in the next slide that there is dust in between the two hard drives. Dirt building up on your hard drives will cause excess heat on the drives and premature failure there as well. So we're going to take a crevice tool and vacuum that out. Then we're going to take the crevice tool inside the computer where the drive bay was and vacuum that out as well. Don't forget to vacuum out the inside of that front air grate on the other side of the filter in case any dirt or dust has gotten through the filter. A lot of computers, if they haven't been cleaned in a while, you'll find a lot of dirt built up there. If you shift the computer or your head around a little bit, you'll see the drive bay fan. This fan pulls air through that lower filter across the hard drives to keep them cool and shoves the air back towards the power supply. The fan in the power supply takes and pulls the heat out from the bottom side of the computer and expels it outside. So we want to make sure that fan is clean and moving as well. You take your crevice tool, vacuum off as much dirt from it as you can if it's clogged up. Then go ahead and take your compressed air and blow the blades of the fan off. The fan blades should spin freely when you put air on them. If they don't, take your finger, try and move the blades. If they're stiff or sticky in its rotation, the fan is probably bad and you're going to need to have it replaced. The next few slides are going to show you some areas of the computer that need to be cleaned, usually with a crevice tool. You want to vacuum off the cables. You want to vacuum off the inside of the drives. You want to vacuum off the underside of your video card. There's a little fan up underneath of the video card on this particular machine. You want to vacuum off the back of the optical drives and the spaces in between these drives, those empty spaces. A lot of dirt and dust will accumulate in there as well. Again, I flip the case over. We're now looking at the CPU cooling fan. Same thing applies here. You want to blow out the dirt and dust. A lot of times dirt and dust will get trapped in the fins of the heatsink underneath of the fan. If that happens, your CPU won't cool properly. If your CPU doesn't cool properly, your computer will do all kinds of strange things. You may think it's Windows. In a lot of cases, it's heat related. The fan just to the left of the heatsink is actually the top case fan, which will pull air back off the heatsink and outside the top of the case. You want to come back and blow out the fan that's on the video card. Make sure this fan spins freely as well or your video card will overheat. Again, we're showing compressed air being used to clear out the fan on the CPU heatsink and the heatsink underneath of it. Please wear safety goggles or dust mask when you're doing this for those of you who are sensitive to dust. Vacuum and blow off the top case fan as well. Some RAM modules have heatsinks on them, some of them do not. 
This is another area you want to make sure is clean. If you can't get it with your crevice tool, go ahead and blow it out. Now we're going to talk for a minute about the capacitors on the motherboard. Capacitors filter the DC voltage coming off your power supply, making sure that your CPU has the proper power that it needs. If the capacitors fail, you'll have all sorts of intermittent problems with the computer locking up, doing strange things. These are examples of solid capacitors. These usually do not fail. I'm going to show you in a minute the ones that do tend to fail. This is an example of the older style electrolytic capacitors. You can see the cross on the top of it. When I flip it over on its side, you can see the cross is not bulged. Once these capacitors fail, you'll see the top either bulge out or you'll see the top bulged out with yellow goo sitting on top of them indicating that the capacitor has failed. Once you find the capacitor has failed, you're going to need to get that taken care of. For those of you who aren't afraid to delve a little further into your computer, I recommend taking the power supply out, taking the cover off there, making sure you don't have any capacitors that have split there as well. Failure of capacitors on a motherboard usually requires replacement of the motherboard. Power capacitors that fail inside the power supply, I would probably recommend that you just go ahead and replace the power supply at that point. I always take my compressed air or air compressor and blow out the power supply, usually from both sides if I can get to it, from the inside and from the outside. Dislodges a lot of dirt that can cause heat related issues in the power supply. Take your brush tool, go along the back of the computer, all those ports that are back there. Dirt and dust in the ports can cause intermittent connections, cause failure of your keyboard, your mouse, things like that that are plugged into the back. I also take compressed air, blow those ports out after I vacuum the excess dirt off them. Same with that rear case fan, I'll blow air back through that as well. At this point, stand the computer up, install the side case and the screws. Go ahead and get it ready to put back under your desk or on top of your desk, wherever you happen to keep it. Plug all your cables in first, except the power cable. Computers like to have all their accessories plugged in before they start up. So if you forget an accessory, you could have a problem with the computer booting up. So always make sure that everything's plugged in, then plug the power cable in. Then you can turn the computer on, boot it up, and enjoy it. Thanks for watching.